Greetings everyone and welcome to Coffee Black, where the Voyager adventures continue on YouTube. I'm your host, Captain G, and this is the channel where we talk anything and everything Star Trek Voyager related, from news, reviews, and more. So for today's video, I'm going to do a breakdown of my personal top 10 villains of Star Trek Voyager. But before we get started, I'd like to encourage brand new viewers to subscribe to the channel. And you can also check us out on X, formerly known as Twitter, and also our Facebook page for more Voyager-related content. So counting down at number 10, we have Captain Rudolph Ransom. Captain Ransom was the captain of the USS Equinox, and just like Voyager, was pulled into the Delta Quadrant by the caretaker. As a villain, I found Ransom to be very sympathetic. His situation was very similar to Voyager's, but unfortunately he and his crew went down a dark path exploiting aliens just so they could get home quicker. But in the end, he did sacrifice himself to save Voyager. And at number 9, we have CEO Henry Starling. Starling's motivations in the two-part episodes Future's End were pretty simple. All he really cared about was obtaining more technology to make more money. And he did this by using a 29th century time ship, harvesting its technology for his own personal gain. In the end, his master plan to travel back into the future was thwarted by the Voyager crew, and the future of the 29th century was saved. And at number 8, we have the Sal. The Sal was one of the many alien captains who was stranded in an area of space known as the Void, along with the USS Voyager. For a brief time, he was a member of Voyager's temporary alliance, but when he proved he was untrustworthy and a murderer, Janeway kicked him and his crew out of the Alliance. Basal later formed his own alliance of raiders, attempting to stop the Voyager Alliance, but Voyager and their allies managed to escape the Void, leaving Basal and his raiders behind. At number 7, we have Kuros, who appeared in the episode Think Tank. Kuros was part of a group called the Think Tank, and they tried to recruit Seven of Nine into their team. Kuros and his think tank inevitably revealed themselves to be wolves in sheep's clothing. While on the surface they appear to be good guys trying to help people out in exchange for something they want, they were later revealed to be ruthless and very manipulative. At number 6 we have the character of Kashik. Kashik was an investigator for the Devor Imperium. His job was to hunt down and capture any and all peoples who had telepathic abilities. This included members of the Voyager crew. At one point, Kashik even says that he's leaving the Devor Imperium and begs of Janeway for asylum. In exchange, he offers to help Voyager transport telepathic refugees through Devor outposts. Over the course of the episode, he attempts to swoon Captain Janeway and promise that he's a good man, but is later revealed to be a liar and a spy. At number 5, we have Dr. Chaotica. Dr. Chaotica was created by Tom Paris for his Captain Proton holodeck program. While the character itself may be cheesy and fiendishly evil in all traditional ways, he still was able to cause the Voyager crew a little bit of grief when he started a war with aliens from another dimension. In the end, the Voyager crew manages to defeat Chaotica, and he seemingly dies in a most dramatic fashion. And at number four, we have Fear. The Fear character was part of an artificial intelligence that was tasked with meeting the needs of the aliens who were surviving in his digital world. Eventually, the AI realized that without people in his world, he would cease to exist and have no purpose so he became the embodiment of fear. In the end, the Voyager crew and Janeway tricked fear and were able to save the hostages and defeat him. And at number three, we have Seska. Seska was a Bajoran that was a member of Chakotay's Maquis crew, who later turned out to be a Cardassian spy. Seska was one of the few villains in Star Trek Voyager who appeared in multiple episodes, and as a whole was the main villain 
of the Voyager crew in Season 2. The second season even ended with Seska gaining control of the USS Voyager, but in the end, Seska ended up dying when Tom Paris and the Talaxians retook Voyager. Even after her death, Seska still appeared in a couple episodes in later seasons. And at number two, we have the Borg Queen. The Borg become a force to be reckoned with for the Voyager crew, starting with season four all the way to its final seventh season. The majority of the confrontations between the Borg Queen and the Voyager crew were usually about Seven of Nine and her interest in having her rejoin the Collective. Additionally, the Voyager crew helped birth a Borg Rebellion by releasing drones who were part of Unimatrix Zero. And in the Voyager finale, not only did they destroy one of the Borg transwarp hubs, but they also seemingly left the Borg Collective completely crippled with the death of the Borg Queen. And finally, at number one, we have the character Anorax from the two-part Year of Hell episodes. For me, Anorax takes the number one spot because he was a relatively relatable character. His motivations made a lot of sense and weren't anything quite as grand as galactic domination or even monetary gain. In the end, the only thing he cared about was fixing the timeline that he had broken, no matter what the cost. And there you have it. That's my top 10 Star Trek Voyager villains. Be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below and give me your top 10 villains as well. I hope everyone enjoyed the video. If you did, please drop a like and also subscribe for more Star Trek Voyager related content. Everyone take care. Live long and prosper.